Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is pre-calc final exam time. So we're going to go through each unit in our little crash course here. First thing, this says evaluate all six trig functions. It's giving me a cosine, and it tells me we're in quadrant four. So I've gone ahead and drawn myself a little helper triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent hypotenuse. And then I can use Pythagorean theorem here. So it would be radical 2 squared plus, I don't know what this y value is, equals 3 squared. That's 9 minus 2, because that's 2. So this is the square root of 7. So now that I have the triangle drawn, I just need to find all my trig ratios. So I'm going to erase that and say, if I know cosine, good, let's find the sine. The sine is opposite hypotenuse, so radical 7 over 3. Sweet deal. But since we're in the fourth quadrant, sine has to be negative, so that's negative. Next up, I need to find the tangent of t. So the tangent is opposite adjacent. That'd be negative radical 7 over radical 2. And you have to rationalize that. So this is negative radical 14 over 2. Now I have the tangent. I've got cosine, sine, and tangent. Now I need their reciprocals. So let's just go in order. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So the secant of t would be 3 over radical 2, which when you rationalize is 3 radical 2 over 2. The cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So that's 3 over radical 7, which when you rationalize that, and this is negative, will be 3 radical 7 over 7. And then the last one, the cotangent of t, oops, my spelling, cotangent of t will be the reciprocal of negative 2 over radical 14. So if I rationalize that, I get negative 2 radical 14 over 14, which can be reduced to negative radical 14 over 7 because 2 over 14 reduces to 1 over 7. So that's my cotangent. I got all six, cosine, sine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. So let's move on. Next up, graphing trig functions. Here's just kind of a rundown. The amplitude is the absolute value right there. The period is 2 pi over b, so there's b. Uh, if we have a vertical shift, it's going to be on the outside, plus or minus k, and then the phase shift on the inside, x plus or minus h. So just kind of a little review there. This is going to tell me the amplitude is 3, and the period is normally 2 pi for cosine, but since it's over 3, it's 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi divided by 3 is my period, and then I also have to deal with this phase shift. So that's saying it's x minus go to the right, pi over 6. So I'm going to draw a little new sort of y-axis and call this pi over 6. This is pi over 6. Now this is where my cosine curve is actually going to start when I graph it. Now when I graph cosine, I always break it up into four key points, or more key points, we count this one as five. And I know that my amplitude is three, so one, two, three, one, two, three. And cosine is supposed to look something like this. We can do better than that. So let's figure out, first of all, where we're going to end. If the period is 2 pi over 3, and I've already done a phase shift of pi over 6, and this is 4 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. That means I'm going to end at 5 pi over 6. Well, that's convenient because now I'm counting by pi over 6. If this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. So now I can pretty much go ahead and draw my cosine curve. So cosine starts up top. There we go goes through the midline, which in this case is the x-axis, it goes down to its minimum, back to the midline, and then back up to its peak, and now I can draw my cosine curve, the most beautiful cosine curve you've ever seen. Nailed it. Domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity, and the range, the minimum y value is down here, so this is negative 3 to positive 3, and since it actually is hitting negative 3, that is inclusive. So it brackets. Let's do another one like that. This is a cosecant graph. So this is a reciprocal function. These are kind of funky. Um, I know that it's going to have a 1 half. It's not really the amplitude, though, when you're talking about reciprocals. It's not called the amplitude. That's why there's not really a blank here. Um, the period is 2 pi over, this is still my b term, so 2 pi over 2 pi is 1. The period is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 1, and this is 1 half. Now, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So let's talk about what the sine wave would look like. If I put little x's here and said this, this is what the sine wave would look like. Well, if we're taking the reciprocal of these, then the first thing is you can't take the reciprocal of 0. So if the sine is 0, then the cosecant has to be 
an asymptote because you can't divide by zero. So here's some asymptotes. And then if I do the reciprocal of one, this is actually actually a point, but the reciprocal of these small fractions are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, so it goes up and it's going to go towards the asymptotes. So the cosecant has these uh, points here that are at one half and negative one half, that's a negative one half. But they go away from the x and axis. Let's graph some terminal points. This is saying that we've got a, an arc along the unit circle that's 3 pi over 2 radians. So 3 pi over 2 puts me down here. 3 pi over 2, the coordinates of that point are 0, negative 1. If I do 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 is about here. So I want the x and y coordinates of that point. 5 pi over 6, if you're thinking in degrees, it is 30 degrees. So I think of a 30, 60, 90 and say across from 30 is 1 half and across from 60 is radical 3 over 2, and since we're in the second quadrant, it's negative radical 3 over 2, positive 1 half. Last one, pi over 4. Pi over 4 is right in the middle here, and if it's the side of a square, I know that the x and y have to be the same, and since it's in the first quadrant, they're both positive. This is radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2, because it's across from 45 degrees when the hypotenuse is 1. And remember, the hypotenuse is 1 for all of these, hence the name unit circle. What if I give you another terminal point here and the terminal point is negative 5 over 13, positive 12 over 13. So negative 5 over 13, positive, it's somewhere in here. This is not to scale, but it's not a big deal. Let's just draw it like there. Okay. This, when we're talking about these curves, we're saying along the outside here, this is my arc. Okay. And I'm saying go to there. That's where you end. What I want to do is say, what if I started at pi and then measured that distance, but since it's negative, you measured it clockwise, because we normally measure counterclockwise. So if I could take this arc and measure it, I would end up starting here, and I would move from pi, I would move out to here, which puts me right there. So then what are the coordinates of that point? Well, the coordinates of that point, they're going to have the same x and y, it's just a matter of which quadrant we're in. We're now in the first quadrant, so they're both positive. This would be 5 over 13, comma, 12 over 13. So that's the first one. We're measuring that, we're starting at pi and going clockwise. Here we're starting at pi and we're going counterclockwise like normal. So if I started at pi and measured that, I would end up down here. So this is a rotation of pi and I'm down here. Whoops. So now they are both, well, I'm sorry, cosine is positive and the y value is negative. So this would be 5 over 13, comma, negative 12 over 13. Fourth quadrant. Last, if you start at 2 pi, so you go all the way around, then you go all the way around, you're back to where you started. So then if I add this t, that will put me at where I started, which is negative 5 over 13 and 12 over 13. And that is it for our unit 1 review.